this was made in about 30 seconds without any sort of modeling software and I didn't have to know how it was made. So today we're going to talk about AI generated 3D models, why they're useful and what they just might be able to do. So in the world of 3D printing, there is a really fundamental problem, and it's the problem of how do you get the object that you want made? While 3D printers are fairly easy to use in the home, and there's large print farms like ours where you can mass produce a part, there's still a giant challenge around actually the creation of the model. Learning how to use CAD is a skill, and it takes a lot of effort to learn how to do it. If you're creating an organic shape, learning to use Blender or other sort of modeling softwares is very difficult. There's this high upfront barrier to entry in creating new 3D models. And this is where AI could really help. There are so many parts to be made that there are not enough designers in the world to produce them at the scale that people will want. And with things like our 3D printing API, anybody in the world can now get access to a 3D printer and have real products delivered. So the demand for new 3D models is only going to continue to increase. So AI is almost necessary in order to solve this problem. So let's go ahead and talk about the AI model that I have here. These were made with Rodin 1, and Rodin 1 is a new 3D native diffusion model that is able to generate pure 3D models from either text or from an image seed. We generally use the image seed because it seems to do a little bit better job. But this model allows you to create really good baseline models of objects. Rodin 1 actually ended up sponsoring this video, so if you want to go try out their stuff, they're offering a 50% credit at the link down in the description there. Try it out, try generating some of your your own models that you can 3D print yourself, and do let us know any feedback that you see down there. In order to create these models, what we did was we uploaded an image. It can either be generated from like ChatGBT or from Rodin's own internal image generator. And once you have an image that you like, then you can pass it on through to the actual mesh generator. You can preview the actual 3D model before doing a full render of it all, and then it will generate a printable STL. Though printable just means that it's an STL that is closed and solid and reliable that could be pulled into 3D printer slicer. Printable, we're gonna talk about a little bit later in the video. But it's actually quite robust. This castle starts with a single image, but when it's generated, much of the detail is retained. You can see the windows, you can see the doorways. The ramparts all have the structure and detail that you want, and they're all connected, and it's a uniform body. We did not have to do any major 3D modeling edits where we pull this into another software and do some cleanup and that kind of stuff. There is some, again, talking about that later, but it wasn't in the normal kind of context. It was about preparing it for a 3D printer, not really preparing the model to be printable. So the tool was actually really, really good. And we were able to run through this small castle. We tried attempting making a ship, which introduces a few issues, but the detail of it is really surprisingly quite good. And we did some rocks for like a D&D &D game. So all of these were fully generated and created with AI from just a text prompt and a little bit of image generation. It was very simple and very seamless. And this is really sort of magical and about on time, because about a year and a half, two years ago, we said it was about two years before 3D mesh generation would come around. And the reason for that is, is that this is a very complicated job to do. Whereas text has the entire internet to pull from, images have the other chunk of the internet to pull from, 3D models are not common enough to have something trained. Rodin 1 was actually trained from Objiverse XL, actually a subset of it of licensed models that they were able to use. And then they also created their own models and have their own training team creating models to help with it as well. And of the AI models I've tried, it is one of the ones that have given the best detail of the models that I've been able to find and still been around. While there have been a number of AI model generators created, the expense of generating these has made many of them go out of business soon after because they couldn't get to a model quickly enough. And again, we're going to talk about that a little bit. Even so though, the training of these models, like I said, requires a lot of data. And Objiverse, as big as it is, they say it, they have 1.5 billion parameters and samples to train from, but that is nothing. That is nothing at all because those are partially likely synthetic data and created stuff, which does not give enough spatial context around parts. This is why 3D modeling with AI is so difficult because there's just not enough information around for them to brute force through it the way LLMs do right now. 
But that being said, they're doing quite well. And using the image as a seed also helps to wrangle it because you can actually use images and the shading within it to help generate part of that model and then do certain amounts of inference to like understand the backside of that model. We actually experimented with this a couple of years ago. But ultimately, the models that are coming out are useful but they're not perfect. That is okay, because right now it's early stages. And if you're able to make a lot of custom D&D terrain, that is a viable product market fit solution that wasn't available before, where people had to pull from a catalog or find stuff, whereas now they can just have exactly what they want made the way they want it. And even though it's organic and rough, it's a rock, who cares? That's a perfect type of a solution. So there is a lot of directions for this to go. But now, the problems with the process, the printability and that kind of thing. Since it's an AI system generating models, it generates just the shape, but it doesn't take into the context the manufacturability of that shape. You can't say, make it 3D printable, and it'll make sure all the overhangs are slanted and that kind of thing. However, if you are wrangling it well enough and giving it enough design freedom, it will get very close. With this castle, many of the ramparts actually do have supports underneath them, but that is part of the architecture of the castles and the image we chose to use to generate this model. Though it does have these interior bridges that have a little bit too much detail inside of them to where removal of support is really, really difficult and support is still kind of necessary, but it had like some downhang icicles coming down that weren't really ideal that you would want to clean up if you were post-processing it. The other thing too is that not all the models are generated with a flat bottom. This one actually had kind of a bulge under the bottom. But for us to be printable, we need a flat base. So the single and only edit we did to this 3D model was pulling down the STL and then cropping off the bottom on the build plate of the printer, which is not that difficult. It's a very simple operation. But in areas like this ship, we flew a little close to the sun on this one, and you have these sails that most definitely require supports. And again, it has a lot of these like little spindly features that you don't want and that kind of stuff. So there is some more detailed model cleanup to do on something this complex. But again, overall, this model is really incredible. You have waves coming around it. You have the ship itself, a watchtower up top. The sails are accurate and to scale and not asymmetrical. It's actually surprisingly good for what you would expect from a very limited data set that these 3D model generators have to work from. But again, coming back to it, the models are limited right now. They cannot make anything. While Roden 1 does have some ways to edit particular areas and edit the point cloud of it all, which are useful, this is now turning into a skill and a bit of expertise. It's not, I want this full uh, normal text communication with this machine in a natural sort of way. You have to start to use the tool in an experience sort of way, which is sort of an issue. But even so, since it is limited, you have to work within the limitations. So we talk about this on the channel all the time, design for the process. This is what it's able to do. This is impressive. And this is a model that people would be willing to use for something. And this could be dropped in the bottom of a fish tank and turn into custom aquarium decor and that kind of stuff. This could do something similar. Again, D&D rocks are fine. You can probably get some barrels and some sci-fi arches out of it where the detail doesn't have to be precise. We're not trying to do a precision CAD model here. You're trying to get artifacts and decoration and that kind of thing. It can do that. So if you are new to modeling, you might not have to know modeling at all, which is really, really exciting. So ultimately, where does this leave us? Well, the Roden 1 model is impressive and it's able to create pretty doggone detailed models that can be printed. And once you have these models, you could create basically a store with infinite selection, but zero inventory. Somebody could go to magic.com, type in what it is they're looking for, and then like 10 options would pop up that are dolly generated images. People say, I like that one. They say buy now for 995. And then you run the AI generated model through our API. We print and ship the model to the customer for you. So that is now feasible. But with that, you have to wrangle it a little bit. If you were creating something like that, you would have to create a store that is focused on, ah, castles for your fish tank, dndrocks.com, that kind of thing. That way you can keep the model really controlled and keep it in the areas where it does really well and stay away from areas where it could cause problems in manufacturability or require a bunch of preparation and that kind of thing. But this, is highly promising. And if this is where we can get to in about 18 months to two years since LLMs have been around, in two more years, it's going to get very, very interesting and probably more like six to 12 months. 
So that's where we are. AI model generators are able to make things that could be final products, and you have the infrastructure now to scale up those products without having to build a print farm yourself or anything else. So now the question is, what are your ideas and what are you gonna go build? Because the barriers to entry are dropping very quickly. Have a great day, everybody.